This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> They say that PRS guitars don't have mojo, they lack in mojo, they don't have that mojo. I uh, wonder what mojo might mean. Uh, I certainly in the past I think have even been guilty of espousing that opinion, but the more of them I've sort of got my hands on and once you find one or two that you like I think you start to maybe get the thing with PRS guitars. So um, I've owned a PRS DGT, the you know one of the pretty posh ones and I felt a little bit silly with that one to be honest with you it kind of 
Um, felt like a lot of money to be held up in a guitar that actually I ended up not really liking that much. Then I got a few PRS Silver Sky SEs to try and demo those and I thought some of them were great for the money and uh, once the, the price had come down, I think even in the UK at the moment, they're as low as 499 which I think is a fantastic guitar for that kind of price range. Yeah, then I, because I was kind of experiencing the SE stuff in the PRS lineup, I grabbed a DGT SE and that guitar has actually probably been one of my favourite guitars that I've played um, full stop and certainly this year. So I think maybe it's a case of trying to find the PRS specs that work for you because they are fairly, you know, varied guitars. Um, this one belongs to Tony from up the road. It's quite a pretty looking thing. I should probably ask him what it actually is. Well, like all good PRS owners, Tony has a piece of paper here. So this is a 53 slash 10 limited from 2010. The special edition model created to celebrate the new 5310 pickups uh, launched in 2010. There were a hundred of these made, okay, of which six came to the UK. So only six of these in the UK, kind of cool. Uh, based on the custom 22 platform. Uh, he's removed the treble bleed cap and changed the tone cap. And there's a coil tap on the tone pot. But a really straightforward guitar. And when it comes to this mojo thing, I think the, the question for me is like, what guitars actually do have mojo that aren't based on something built in the 50s? So I think we probably all agree that a Stratcaster, a Telecaster, uh, even Jazzmasters, um, Les Pauls, SGs, these have mojo, right? Because we've seen plenty of music made on them but can you think of like a, a modern fender guitar or a modern gibson guitar that has mojo whatever we're defining mojo as um and you know are gibson still making guitars with mojo when you find out for instance like you did in the recent anderton's video that they're essentially throwing boxes of tools and keys at guitars to to get the bumps and scratches necessary for that particular mojo so when you kind of put it in context of that, you know, is that what people mean by mojo? Um, then to me, I think actually, well, PRS, they're just as valid. Uh, if not more, I, I kind of think you probably end up in many cases having a better experience with a, a PRS from the factory than a Gibson. Let me know if that's not been your experience. But I think QC with um, PRS is known for being pretty good. And uh, particularly their, their older stuff. So the things that I think do have mojo about the PRS is the lines. Certainly when you've got it in your hands, the, the kind of carved top is beautiful. I'm not a huge fan of quilted maple, um, but this kind of pops really nicely. And because it's kind of contrasting that kind of posh wood with the more natural stain, I kind of dig that. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of some of the... the uber colorful bursts that prs have but then you know not all of their guitars look like that um, and they do make a fair range the birds i've changed my mind on because initially i kind of thought in some ways they're a little bit garish but turns out those are a tribute to paul's mum and i actually think that's kind of sweet in in a lot of ways and if you don't like the birds you can get a moon which is cool the one thing that I end up not really liking about the PRS is this heel join which I think I don't know it seems a little bit boxy to me and does kind of get in the way a little bit you've got this fantastic cutaway in this kind of uh, access point here that really does help you to get up there but in a way it's kind of mitigated by quite a chunky heel uh, but other than that pretty cool instruments I think um, so just in case you were wondering how some of the other bits sound, I'm using here Tonex with a Dumble 1979 capture. We'll start off with its split.
think PRS have some of the best split tones going. <laughs> in Let me know your thoughts. I think a great little guitar, this one, 5310, of course, uh, not a cheap guitar. And I think maybe that's part of why people might end up thinking, you know, PRS is not that cool, is it? Because you're sort of, in a way, sticking a Rolex on the end of your fingers and saying, I can afford one of these in some ways. Um, but then I think they stand up to like a Gibson Fender Custom Shop really well. So maybe you don't need to care about that. Cheers. You know, and Philip Sace seems to find some mojo in a silver sky. Uh, John Mayer, of course, came up with that silver sky. And I think, yeah, when you think about, you know, a, a Fender Custom Shop these days, what would that be, like three and a half to four grand? Um, you pay a bit extra for that mojo, but realistically, the silver skies that I've played, the core, and you hear plenty of good things about them, I think they're making really good guitars. And in the UK, those were down for sale at sort of $16.99. Uh, I think a, probably a Fender Custom Shop quality instrument for really good prices. So um, for me, this Mojo thing has started to actually not make too much sense because what PRS actually do is make a pretty decent instrument and across a few different price ranges. And of course they make the really stupidly expensive stuff. Um, but then even Gibson and Fender are doing that now and they're, you know, it seems bonkers to me, you know, the Murphy Lab guitars, seven grand, all the way up to 20 grand. It's kind of like, I don't know, I don't know who those are for, but someone must be buying them. Probably you and it, Jake. But yeah, no mojo. I don't really agree anymore, um, especially the ones with the treble bleeds still on. I find that the coil splits work fantastically well, especially on that PRS SEDGT that Tony is borrowing at the moment. I think, yeah, no mojo, no problem. They're, they're great guitars, they look good, um, 
your wife probably likes the way they look. They're just kind of pretty tidy, aren't they? I think. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, maybe you have a, a different definition of mojo to me, but I think t for me, mojo typically is something that was built quite a long time ago or designed a long time ago. And uh, it doesn't matter, I guess, that there's plenty of great players that have been playing at PRS for a, a long time. You know, Carlos Santana, Jimmy Herring, um, lots of great players, Mark Tremonti, Chad Kroger, uh, Charlie Simpson from Busted. The list goes on. Um, 